Hey guys, what's up? Aru. In light of recent events in my life and with the newest character's release, Chiori for me comes up as a vivid and very interesting character that really speaks to me in ways that I can't even begin to imagine. As interesting as the fabrics and clothes that she makes for our so beloved characters. Behind her glamorous and chic personality lies someone who ran away from home and persevered through thick and thin, becoming a visionary and trendsetter of fashion as well as proving to not only the people who shunned her but also to herself that she can achieve great things as long as she truly believed. Even so far as attaining a vision for her fervor and passion to become the greatest fashion designer in all of Tevat. For some, she may just be another new character to add in this ever-expanding roster of characters, but for me, and maybe for you too, she's a representation of tenacity and talent, as well as sheer force of will in pursuit of a dream and forging their own paths. Something that I'm sure many of us strive to do, but is often held back by our own circumstances and the cards that's been dealt to us. I make these character highlight videos every now and then to remind myself and maybe even you, the viewer, that we as individuals experience not just a lone trail, but more of a path that we need to strive for and find, no matter how hard it could be. And that characters within games such as Genshin are a wild exaggeration of problems, trials, and hardships we have or may face in the future. Granted, her story and experiences may not be as heavy as the Archons or the Harbingers. She's one of the characters that showcase the relatability that you won't get from gods and magical beings. She's a human, and just like us, she deals with the world and its complications as a human. So going through that along with her overall lore, I hope I can unveil the fabrics of Chiori's story and weave her ideals into the nuanced life lessons that Genshin Stories presents. Timestamps will be down in the description below for those of you who wish to see a specific segment. Let's get started. Chiori's life didn't really start in Fontaine. Rather, it began on the other side of the continent, Inazuma, a region deeply rooted in traditions and order and was also in a time of strict and uncompromising rule of the Raiden Shogun, a time when the Sakoku Decree and the Vision Hunt Decree would tower over all of Inazuma's people. But this is where she also had found her passion for sewing and needlework, an ability that felt so natural that she was almost breathing its principles. However, her design and approach was anything but. She was an eccentric, an avant-garde, and her works couldn't be easily comprehended by her peers and masters, leading to multiple rejections that she almost couldn't find enough work to live for. This I'd say is the first obstacle that many of us who wish to pursue our interests are faced with. Not only are our views sometimes different from the norm, but the majority of people would also reject it simply because we are different. A case of individuality versus conformity is a very difficult thing to grasp, and even more difficult to dare and be ourselves at the cost of being different. And for those that do take that leap, have even more hardships to face. Something about Genshin's laws that cannot be replicated in real life is visions and the concept of aiding those being fervent and passionate with one's own interests. Desires, to my understanding, have a deep connection with becoming a candidate for Celestia's Shards of Mastery. In the game, when someone is so honed into their desires that it would seem insane to keep going, they would at least theoretically be given a vision. And these are only for the few cases of very passionate and headstrong people that would receive a vision. Not caring for what others may say to or about them, and just doing what makes them happy. Regardless of what troubles may come in their future or what trials they may face, they still pursue their passions, divine or not. And for Chiori, her vision became an emblem for that passion. Even though it is a gift given by whatever metric Celestia measured her, it still served as a testament to her refusal to submit to external forces, human or divine. And much more when she found out that the Shogun would take it from her, which would then mark a new chapter of her trials in pursuit of her passion. The time Chiori decided to leave Inazuma and pursue her dreams in Fontaine was no mere displacement or migration from her homeland, but a courageous act to free herself from what held her back 
and a daring leap into the unknown. A decision that is very exciting but is equally terrifying to do. Not knowing what happens and just plain not knowing is something that we as rational beings fear, and rightly so. How can you guarantee that you'll be safe if you don't know what's going to happen, or at least what's on the other side? Coming from an isolated region and following her interest in places completely unknown to her may be daunting, but it also aligns with her ideals. Fontaine is dubbed as the city of artistic freedom, individuality, and discovery, valuing the avant-garde and giving way to those who wish to think freely which gives Chiori the fresh new start that she wanted. A gamble that Chiori made thinking that it would fulfill her wish. But from her character story as well as her entire story quest, that didn't exactly happen overnight. Because what followed was a string of difficult tasks that not a lot of us could ever fathom and even less are ready to face. Leaving your home for a dream and acting on that dream no matter the cost is borderline insane if you weigh in the hardships that Chiori had to face. She had to fight for that wish when she was in Fontaine and made another insane gamble on Fashion Week, which earned her a title in Fontaine, a valued reputation as well as a renowned store. This may sound simple when we just simply hear it from our seats and playing the game, but acting on a dream and maintaining your passion for said dream are two different and very difficult tasks. But it's something that you need to keep doing for a long, long time if you want to see the slightest results come to fruition. And even then, the results that you get may not even be the same level that you were expecting. But props to Chiori for having achieved that dream. Chioria Boutique, which is her store, is also no mere business establishment, but served as the fort of her dreams where every stitch of her needle was a steady step towards her dream, which is why she's so headstrong and harsh on customers that beg to differ from her ideals especially when they're inside of her boutique. She's made it into a fort to keep what she values protected and also a home where she can be herself and follow her desires, that is, fashion. Not only did she create a place that she could call home, she also made quite a lot of connections within Fontaine, which then allowed her to become a sort of liaison between Inazuma and Fontaine, a feat that very few can achieve after basically migrating to a new place on her own. But her entire story is a testament to pushing forward and persevering through any and all difficulties. And while the future may look bleak, we ourselves can still make an effort to change that bleakness. First, turning it into something viable, then maybe a bit more comfortable, and then before you know it, it becomes the dream we once wished for. When it comes to dealing with adversities as well as facing insurmountable tasks, I think Chiori really showed that side in her story quest, and not in the most obvious ways either. If you were thinking it was when she was fierce with her apprehension of Uther, you had another thing coming. Uther, if you could remember, was her first partner when she first entered the fashion game in Fontaine. Her and Uther's situation highlights the stark contrast between two individuals that faced the harsh reality of chasing a dream. Uther gave up on his dream of becoming the greatest fashion designer and pursued more tangible ways of living, while Chiori, who was in the same position, decided to spend her remaining time preparing for one more chance at that dream. You may think that Uther was weak and couldn't handle the pressure, but if you think about it, Uther's decision is the more logical of the two. An all-or-nothing gamble where you either lose everything you had and had to start over, or settle for a more stable business. You would be surprised how many would choose the latter for the sake of their safety and stability. What sets Chiori apart from people like Uther is her drive to keep fighting even when the odds are stacked against her. And the quest shows that characteristic the entire time, and even implies that she does so multiple times over ever since she and Uther took separate paths. Her struggles never stopped after she gained her fame, but it only multiplied as she was now in everyone's radar, which is again highlighted in the quest, and again, Chiori faces that head on. Chiori's character is, in my eyes, a representation of the essence of perseverance, remaining undaunted no matter what hardships that she may face. Her designs and methods express a deep commitment and self-worth against what I can only describe as a tapestry of trials. 
Her own convictions and radicality made her creations into a safeguard for herself, a testament to her ambition, a symbol for those who embrace her uniqueness, and a reminder for those who differ from her ideals. Reminding us that pursuing dreams is oftentimes a dangerous journey, and even more perilous in a fantasy setting. Yet we're also often encouraged to face these trials head on, forging ahead and dealing with problems fully. Even though she's a mere human in the game, she embodies what some of us would call rebels, outcasts, and dreamers. A pretty real thing that I think happens almost every day in real life. Those that feel the weight of societal expectations but also try to rise and forge their own path and trying to be their own person. That's Chiori. And that's what a lot of people are going through. So I guess the message here is push through, keep going. Don't let others keep you from your goal, but also consider their sentiments moving forward to be the master of your destiny. In short, submit yourself to Celestia. Just kidding, please don't. Celestia is weird. You know, of all the characters that I would find interesting and relatable, I didn't think Chiori would be one of them. Weirdly enough, the others, if you were wondering, were Gaming, Farina, and Amber. <laughs> I can probably make this into a separate series about simpler characters that still deserve some recognition, but I digress. The next video is either about Arlecchino or a theory on visions again, since I haven't talked about it for a while. For now, I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!